Today we'll be classifying quadrilaterals using coordinate geometry. To illustrate what I mean by classify, I'll show you this brief illustration with a dog. And you can see off to the right is a part of a flow chart. And you could look at this dog and you could say animal, pet, dog, poodle, or toy poodle, and you'd be technically correct. However, when I ask you to classify the animal, I always want you to name the most specific classification possible. So you would classify the animal as toy poodle since this is the most specific. We'll now turn our attention to quadrilaterals, but when asked to classify them, just as true above, we will always classify them by giving the most specific classification possible. As a quick review of the flow chart that was back in section 3.1 about quadrilaterals, quadrilateral just means any four-sided polygon. Trapezoids have one pair only of parallel sides. Parallelograms have two pairs of parallel sides. And then some of the parallelograms could also be considered a rhombus or a rectangle. A rhombus if all sides are equal, rectangle if there's four right angles, or it could be a combination of both, which would make it be a parallelogram with four equal sides and four right angles, which, of course, is a square. Now, to find the slope of each side, I just use the formula for the slope of a line, remembering that y's go over x's. I've already set them up for each one of these sides. And you can see that this one right here ends up being 3 over negative 19. The slope of BC ends up being 19 over 3. The slope of CD ends up being negative 9 plus 6, which is negative 3 over 11 minus a minus. Remember, that's going to add, so that's going to be 19. And then the slope of DA is going to be 19 over negative 5 plus 8, which is going to be a 3. Now, I'm sure you notice that there's some similarity between these. I've written our slopes right next to the sides. And as you can see, the opposite sides are parallel in both cases. So if none of them had been the same slope, then we would have had no parallelism at all. And we just have a regular quadrilateral and nothing further. If exactly one pair of these sides uh, were parallel, then we would have a trapezoid. And then the more specific possibility would be an isosceles trapezoid. So we'd have to go find something about the length of the two non-parallel sides. But now let we, we are sure we have a parallelogram here, since both sets of pair sides are opposite, are parallel. So let's go ahead and uh, find the length of every side. The length of AB is going to be the square root of 14 minus a negative 5 quantity squared plus 10 minus 13 squared, which ends up equaling 19 squared, the square root of 19 squared plus the square root of 3, excuse me, 3 quantity then squared. And that total ends up coming out to be the square root of 370. The length of BC is going to be found taking the square root of 14 minus 11 squared plus 10 minus a a minus 9 squared. And that's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 19 squared. And that's going to be equal to the square root of 370. The length of CD is going to be the square root of 11 minus a negative 8 squared plus negative 9 minus a negative 6 squared. And that comes out to be a 19 squared underneath, 
plus a negative 3 squared. And that's equal to the square root of 370. You can see a trend happening now. Uh, the length of dA is going to be negative 8 minus a minus 5 squared plus negative 6 minus 13 squared. And that's going to be a negative 3 underneath quantity squared plus a negative 19 squared. And that's equal to the square root of 370. Now it is time to analyze the situation. As you can see, I've written in all the uh, slopes inside the, the sides, and I've written all the lengths outside. And basically, um, we've already concluded that it, we have at least a parallelogram. As far as seeking the most specific calculations possible, do you notice that these slopes right here are negative reciprocals of each other, and likewise here and here and here and here. So what we have are four right angles. And since every length came out to be the same, we even know more specifically that this is a square. When you actually go about this process, you should always show every calculation, label any slope or distance that you calculate so we know which side you're dealing with and then give an explanation as to the choice you made, such as I did here. Finally, I leave you with one problem that you should try on your own and bring to class tomorrow. Thank you.